Okay. Let's go. Easy. All right, watch the chair. Take fire, Charlie. Come on, let's go way over here. You know what all this will be? Two paragraphs in the newspaper. I can just see it now. Five companies respond to an apartment house fire. No major injuries reported. It's bugging you, man. Look, some stupid jerk is careless, and this is what we end up with. Look, we saved the lady and her boy. You got nothing to get worked up over. Ease off. Switch the neutral, buddy. <coughs> Right. I'm sorry. Remember, we play it cool and easy. Just like we did in football. You set them up, I knock them down. Oh, where's my baby? Where's my baby? No, let me go. It's OK, lady. It's all right. No, my baby. Look, here he is. Come here. Where's my baby? Come here. He's right here. Look, your boy is right here. Not me. She means sister. We're sister. She's still in there. South Seas. Do you think we'll ever really go, Charlie? It's nice to dream about. Imagine there we are, somewhere in the Pacific, cuddling in the forepeak, Ted back aft, keel hauling the kids. The kids, huh? Have we or have we not been going together since high school, and he has never once mentioned kids? Hey, I sort of assume, you know. <laughs> oh, so did I? I just like to be consulted. Lady's got a point, Charlie. Okay. Okay, I promise you will be consulted before every kid. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Rochester. Hi, Jim. Yeah, 
Danny, you love being an explorer. Oh, yeah, well, even though it may be part of my probation. Wrong. This is an honor, something extra. Well, what's it going to be like? Well, a fire explorer is the next thing to being a real firefighter. Oh, well, yeah? Mm-hmm. By the time Charlie finishes training you, you'll do everything but fight fires. Really? Mm, maybe I'll like it. Yeah, you're old enough right now to do almost everything except really fight the fires. You could be really important right now. But if you want to wait till you grow up... I'll see you, kiddo. Bye. You know, maybe I will like it. Even if I have to do it. Hi, Chief. Hi, Charlie. Uh, when do I get to ride to a fire? Slow down, Danny. You got a lot to learn before you get to ride with us. Like what? Um, real quick, you'll see. Charlie, he's all yours. Okay, how about checking out these firefighting manuals, Quicksilver? All of these? I'm not that quick. It'll take me forever. And it never stops, Danny. Learning how to save people's lives and property is a full-time job. Okay, okay, I'll start to read them. But there's got to be something else I could do. How are your hands? My hands? Well, they're fine. What do you think? If you've got good hands, you'll learn how to tie knots, how to place the equipment. Well, then can I roll with you guys? After you learn a few more things. You mean there's more? Mm-hmm. Page six, paragraph three. Read it. You know, you guys really put pressure on a guy. <laughs> You have to demonstrate to... To two different officers on two separate occasions a thorough knowledge of the four-way valve. Give me a break. Okay, you can take ten. If you use the time to put on your uniform. My what? Your uniform. Hey, 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 hey. Pretty snazzy, huh? <laughs> if I put on this, then can I ride to a fire? Uh, yes, if we take the sleeves in. And you put in three more weeks of hard study, maybe. It's a deal. And then the chaplain says, Do you, Constance, take this grungy firefighter as your lawfully wedded so on and so forth? And you say, Can I get back to you next week? <laughs> hey, way to talk. If you're going to be sassy, why don't you marry Ted? Hey, I asked her once. She turned me down. She said I wasn't ugly enough. Well, you got to hand it to him. He's come a long way since then. All downhill. Oh, all right. Are we going to play Keystone Cops here all night, you guys? Are we going to practice getting married? Neither one. We're going to have something to eat. Honey, <laughs> it's getting very close now. Do you, uh, do you have the jitters? Oh. After all these years that Charlie and I have been going out, it seems so silly to feel nervous. But yes, the butterflies are making an aerial attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll be fine. You know, it has been a long time. I remember you and Charlie at the senior prom. Oh. <laughs> Suddenly, I don't feel so nervous anymore. You know, I had the jitters that night, too. <laughs> Joe, huh? I just want to thank you so much for having the wedding here at the house, and especially for giving me away. Well, you and Charlie are like our own. We just wanted something that would make your parents proud, that's all. <gasps> they would be, Chief. They really would be. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> You know, I'd rather be putting out fires instead of practicing all this study stuff. Danny, putting out fires isn't like blowing out a match. It's a science. Now, if you want to quit studying, you may as well quit right now. Hey, I didn't say I wanted to quit. I just said I'd rather. Now, you can't bust a guy for rathering, can you? Well, I guess you got me there. One more thing, though, I want to know if you can handle. Try me. Think you can cut being ring bearer at my wedding? Ah, uh, I thought it had to do with putting out fires and stuff. Well, it does. Fire of the heart. Besides, Ted needs all the help he can get. He's best man, and if you don't remind him, he may leave the ring on his bike. Yeah, well, in that case, I can handle it. <laughs> all right.
Charles, do you take this woman to thy lawful wedded wife, to love, honor, and cherish from this day forward as long as you both shall live? I do. Constance, do you take this man as your lawful wedded husband, to love, honor, and cherish from this day forward as long as you both shall live? I do. Then, by the powers vested in me, I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. so bad during the day, but please can't you do something about these 24-hour shifts? I'll talk to the chief. Promise? See you at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Oh, you. You better get out of here before I change my mind about letting you go. Don't leave home till I get there. Not a chance. See you later, babe. Code red. Code red. Task Force 88, engine 18, battalion 6, helicopter 5. Reported structure fire, 870 South Front Street. That's 870 South Front Street. Your time is 645. OCD clear. That's the Anderson plant. You better hold on to your helmets. You can't stand the heat. Stay out of the kitchen.
Chris, can you give me a report? Third floor is totally engulfed, and it looks like it's spreading to the fourth. All units for Battalion 6. I want everybody off the fourth floor. And let's prepare for heavy screams. From each unit. Did we get everyone off that floor? We're at 10 Charlie. Charlie? Ted, you read me. Ted, come in. Ted, do you read me? I'm going in. No, no. But that's 10 Charlie in there. Someone's got to help them. I can't risk anyone else. down here real fast. We have an injured fireman. So, Connie, I may be a little late. Will do. You can buy her breakfast if I'm tied up. Yeah, I charge it to you, right? How's it going, Charlie? You've seen better days, Chief. So is your ugly son. Hey, you always did have lousy taste. Except in wives and friends. And I get the best of both. Get out of here, you turkey. Thanks, Ted. Charlie's dead. strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me to embrace a little child before it is too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout, quickly 
and efficiently put the fire out. I want to fill my calling, Lord, and give the best in me to guard my every neighbor and protect his property. And if according to my fate, I am to lose my life, please bless with your protecting hand my children and my wife. Excuse us just a sec, Haley. Oh, sure. Do you think Ted's all right? Well, I know he won't admit to anyone, not even to himself, how upset he is. Yeah, they were so close. Thank you. How about if I fix you something to eat? Oh, no, thanks. I'm not hungry. Haley, I know that there are some things of Charlie's still down at the station. Do you think anyone would mind if I stop by and pick them up? Mm -mm, of course not. As a matter of fact, why don't you come by tomorrow and I'll give you a hand, okay? Thank you. Everything okay, son? Oh, hi, Dad. Sure, everything's okay. Well, oh, Ted, uh, if you feel like talking. Yeah, I don't have much to say, Dad. Hey, honest, everything's fine. It's just fine. Charlie had this personally autographed by Don Sutton. He was so proud of it. Sutton doesn't uh, play for the Dodgers anymore. I don't know what to do with these things. I don't think I can handle them. Being reminded and all. When, uh, my father was killed, my mother went through the exact same thing. She couldn't bear having anything around that brought back memories. At the same time, she couldn't handle the thought of those things being in someone else's hands either. So they just stayed. And eventually, in time, she got over it. Now those things are worth the world to her. world, huh? What's the world worth without Charlie? Ted? I made a trade-off today, Danny. Thought I might go down to the boat and do a little fishing, catch some sun. That's it? I thought you said you were busy. Sounds like a pretty full schedule to me. What's wrong with you? Charlie was your best friend. You didn't even cry. And now you're just going fishing. Danny, people die. It's just the way it is. You gotta learn that. Yeah, but you're supposed to care about it. I care. I care a lot. Like I said, partner, I gotta go.
Ted. I saw some of Charlie's funeral on TV. Well, lots of laughs, right? I remembered all the double dates. I thought maybe you might need someone to talk to. What do you have in mind? I'm trying to help. Look, I don't need any help, Ruth, okay? A fireman dies. That's part of the job. We all know that. So the only help I need is just to be left alone. You got that? Sure, Ted. But you're not doing yourself Ruth, any... Ruth, don't be a shrink. Be a friend, okay? Okay. Hi, Ted. Dad? I just thought I'd come by and see if you'd reconsider about supper. I, I don't think so. Your mom would sure love to see you. Is Connie going to be there? Yes. We thought it might help. Dad, would you tell her for me if there's anything I can do? Why don't you come to supper? Tell her yourself. Dad. I appreciate you coming all the way out here. I just want to be alone right now, okay? Now, look, you have two weeks vacation due, right? Why don't you take this boat and just sail off somewhere? No, Dad, that's not what I want. Look, I'm okay, really. I'm fine, there's nothing wrong. Well, be sure you phone Mom and say hello. I will. Uh, Ted. Said he'd call you. Doesn't Ted care about anybody? Of course he cares, Danny. Yeah, well, he sure isn't acting like it. I thought you said you guys were friends. We are friends. I just think that right now. We're... Yeah, right now he's acting weird. Danny, we'll talk about it later. We thank thee, God for thy bountiful ways. We thank thee, God, with all our praise. And on this day, at this, thy table, bless this food. Just leave him alone for a while. Bless this food, and all who partake of it. Amen. like a real jerk. Danny, some people react differently when someone dies. Some people cry. You know, like Connie and my mom? They, they get it all out. Some people hurt bad. Some people hold it in. Maybe they feel that they fall apart, they let it all out. I mean, you're saying Ted really is sorry Charlie died? More than you, or me, or practically anybody. You can bet on that. It's only... He doesn't know how to show it. Or maybe he's afraid to show it. Ted, afraid? Danny, anybody who fights fires is special. He or she has to live every day knowing that they might die. Now, 
They, they got to block that out. They just can't think about it. If somebody does die, somebody close, they have to think about it, and that's what makes it scary. Because you've lost somebody special. It forces them to remember that they, that they might die themselves. You know, a long time after my father died, I had a hard time remembering anything about him. And I never cried about anything, never, ever. Until one day my cat died. And I just cried and cried and cried so much. Well, I started to remember about my father again. It made me really sad. You know? I know. You know what else? I think I understand about ten now. Joe, just the way I told you, he froze. What exactly do you mean, Captain? He wouldn't move. He wouldn't follow me. I had to go back and shake him out of it. And then? And then nothing, nothing. I could have been killed while he was out of it. Anybody on that team could have been killed. Joe, I want Ted off the task force. Now that would kill him. There are plenty of staff jobs until he gets back on his He's feet. He's a firefighter. Look, Chris, I didn't make the world. I just live in it. Ted is no good to us the way he is. He belongs on the... We're talking about a man, a man who believes in his job, a pro, someone we need, someone the people out there need. You can't make a snap decision about a man like that. We lost a very good firefighter last week. Let's not lose another one now, if we can help it. Welcome, Chief. All right, Tom. Oh, fine. How much are drags headed? Well, just that you thought Task Force One needed a special drill. As quickly as you can set it up, and as tough as you can make it. Well, now that you're all warmed up, how about a game? Sure. You, sir. One zero. Two zero. You're playing pretty rough. Saw you in Benton's office today. Did he tell you what happened? Ah, he blows a lot of steam. You know, he thinks General Patton is an old softy. There's nothing wrong with that, and he tells it like it is. It's like he sees it, you mean. Look, I just don't want to make any more mistakes, Chris. What are you talking about? Chris, I'm asking for your help. I want to do the right thing. Look, if Benton didn't pinpoint it for you in there, I will. I froze. A fireman can't freeze. He's got to react. There are too many lives at stake. If this is leading to what I think it is, I well, just... Chris, I don't... maybe I... No, should... don't say it, okay? Just... Maybe, maybe I razz you about your lifestyle, your girlfriends, and playing the guitar all the time, but I'm serious about this. You're good at your job. Darn good. Now, what's ever wrong right now, you're going to make it right. 
Do you hear me? Task Force 1, Battalion 6. Report non-emergency to a battalion drill. Drill Tower 89. Your time is 15-12, OCD clear. Did you come on with us? I think you'll find this interesting. Oh, but I was going to practice first aid on Sophie. Uh, I think that can wait till later. Why don't you come on? Okay. Oh, why don't you ride for Captain? Okay. The chief thinks I'm even rustier than all of you. Yeah, he's right. I need a volunteer for the jump. I'll do it, Captain. You're too fat. I'm not fat. How about me, Captain? You're too thin. Besides, I think I just heard Ted volunteer. Sure, Captain. Any problem with heights? No problem, Captain. Okay, start climbing. It's kind of high. Yes, it is. Oh, you have to be a firefighter. Well, I like to try that sometime, Chief. I think. When you become a firefighter, Danny, when you become a firefighter. Is there a special way you jump? Well, you have to be very relaxed. Jumping into a jumping into a life net is only done in an extreme emergency, like when there's nothing else left to do. It's also used in fireman's training to gain confidence. Rookie games, Cap. Never too late to learn how to do it right, Chris. That's a piece of cake for Ted. Ready? Up. Hey, Ted, I think you've been eating too good. All right, put it back. Okay, warm-up time is over. Now let's try a hot fire exercise. What are they gonna do, Chief? Oh, just a routine exercise, Danny. Let me give you my semi-patented size-up. What we have here, folks, is our usual six-story drill tower fire. Except that this one started in the basement. The problem is, the janitor has stored a lot of dangerous cleaning solvents. Put it out. You sure you remember how to do this? Piece of cake.
Chris. 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 Chris, you okay? Chris, can you hear me? Chris, please hear me. You okay, Bubba? Yeah. Now that you are. <laughs> Just another drill, huh? You got that right. <laughs> Nothing to it, Dad. Where you go, sir? Plenty of books. Is it that hard for a college degree? I hope so. Who knows? Maybe I'll be finished with school by the time you graduate. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and we could do something together. That would be terrific. Uh, I'd love that. We're sure going to miss you. <sighs> I'll be back. We're counting on that. Okay. Well, Daddy, hey, I got something for you. This was Charlie's. He'd want you to have it. Start. Well, don't ask your mom. No, no, talk to the chef here. You see, I was talking to Martelli, and he gave me this great recipe for pork chops. He said you put in a little wine sauce, he said add a few shallots, and then he said it's good to serve with potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> 